In the last video, I mentioned how I accidentally bought two backhoes. Uh, and I guess I'll let you decide if that's clickbait or if I should have called it uh, mistakenly bought two backhoes or stupidly bought two backhoes. But, ouch, oh my gosh, ah, that just went right into my leg. Here's the story. This is the one that I ended up with. This is the Case 580K. But this was not my first attempt to buy a backhoe. Uh, most of the land was initially cleared here with an excavator that my friend uh, who has a site company uh, came out with. And then I went to the Ritchie Brothers auction in Orlando. And this place is crazy if you don't know anything about it. They just have thousands and thousands of machines. It was in November. They had 17 backhoes and I didn't feel comfortable bidding on a single one of them. They were all just trashed, except for, you know, the nice brand new ones, uh, but nothing in my price range that I even considered bidding on. At that auction, I decided to buy this. Uh, this is a little Terex R070T, uh, similar to the ASV RT30. And it's a compact skid steer that I paid 10,000 for, and then there was a $1,000 buyer's fee. So this is a pretty darn capable little machine. Certainly not enough to do, you know, two acres of land, but I've been very happy with this machine, uh, but I just needed something bigger. So after Ritchie Brothers, I went on a wild goose chase around the state of Florida. So on my way back from, I believe my third or fourth failed attempt, you know, people on the phone say these backhoes are in excellent condition, ready to work. You get there, everything's broken. The one in Ocala, the last one that I looked at before the Ford that I bought, um, we got there, put the stabilizers down, and it's just a geyser of hydraulic fluid. On my way back from that one, I'm on Craigslist, and there's a Ford, a 1990 Ford 655C on Craigslist. It had been up a little while, but I figured, you know, it's half hour, hour out of the way. Might as well go and at least take a look at it. So I swing by, look at it, and um, to my surprise, everything worked. It was an older machine, obviously, you know, it was pretty worn out, but not a single leak, no rust, everything functioned as it should. Uh, and so I was super excited after looking at, you know, if you count the auction, probably 20 backhoes very seriously to find one that I actually felt comfortable buying. He had it listed for 16,000, I offered 10, we countered, we ended up at $12,000. So I was very excited to have a working running backhoe for $12,000. Uh, and this is the part that I hope is a lesson to everyone. So I'm trying to get this in the beginning. So if you're not interested in backhoes, at least you learn this lesson and we'll talk backhoes in a little bit. But um, I gave him $5,000 down on this stupid backhoe. Why on earth would I put money down to hold a backhoe that's not going anywhere? I, I guess I was just excited and I got the best of me and I, I don't know why I did it. I put 5,000 down on the $12,000 machine. I said I'd come back the next day with the 7,000 and pick it up with a trailer. That night, I go home and I go to screen cap the Craigslist ad before the seller takes it down. I like to do that when I buy things so that I have, you know, as they advertised it. And in my town, not 10 minutes away, is a 1995 Case 580K for $10,000. And this guy was a developer, or a contractor rather, who had used it to build his own $1.5 million house, put all new tires on it, all of the hoses, except the hoe had been redone. There's $1,500 tint on it. Uh, he said he had over 20,000 into it, had a, you know, all the receipts from the mechanic who did all the work on the engine. It was a county machine, so it had very low hours and very well maintained. And I was just sick because I had just agreed to pay 12,000 for a machine far inferior to this one. So I call the seller of the Ford and I beg him. Um, I say, please, please, I understand the point of a deposit. I'm begging you. There's one 10 minutes from me. I won't have to drive two hours and tow a 16,000 pound machine back. Can I please have my deposit back? And he said, no. And I begged him, please just, just tell me what, what it would take to get my deposit back and I'll, I'll consider it. And he said, I'll give you 3,000 back and keep 2,000. So I just couldn't, couldn't stomach giving up 2,000. I called him two more times begging, just take $500 of my money, take $1,000 of my money. But he held firm. He said, I'm taking $2,000. If you want your 3,000, come get it. Or come get the machine with your extra 7,000. So as I'm driving up to pick up the Ford, I am negotiating the purchase of this because I know it's the machine I need. It is an AC cab in much better condition and it has a four-way bucket, which I know I'm gonna need for all the land clearing. 
Long story short, the seller of this was so compassionate that when he heard the story of the guy trying to keep my $2,000 as a deposit, took another $1,000 off this. So I got this machine for $9,000. Um, so I figure now I've got two backhoes. Uh, I will at least use the Ford. It had a little bit bigger bucket. I'll at least use that to move some dirt. The very first day, it breaks. Uh, apparently, I ran over some kind of root or something, and it took two days. There was a, a wire inside that got pulled uh, underneath the engine. Even had a mechanic come out, and he just said, you've got yourself a doozy. I can figure it out if you want to pay me $100 an hour, but I still figure, just keep using it. It's not going to be worth any less than $12,000. Just keep going. And then the Ford breaks again. This time it was a coolant hose uh, had deteriorated. Uh, so at this point I decide it's time to cut my losses. I'm just going to sell this thing. And I list it on Craigslist for $15,000. Uh, I find a buyer. And then everything with this economy hit. So he looked at it late February. Came back on the 1st of March. And basically said I'll give you $8,000 from the machine. And so I'm not willing to lose $4,000. It's just, that's not going to happen. I would keep it. But I also realize I have a feeling we're heading into a pretty long recession where a construction equipment is not going to be very easy to sell. And I'm sitting on 20 something thousand dollars worth of machines, $33,000 of machines if you count the skid steer. So in the end, I could not get them. I tried to get them up to $10,000 so that at least I was even with the $2,000 I could have given the other, the other seller. Uh, he would only go 9500 but I was grateful for that because it was $9,500 cash going into this whole mess, and I knew that we needed the cash more than we needed two backhoes. So, the Ford was sold. I just could not be happier with this, and I could not have been any less happy with that Ford. So it was an expensive lesson. I learned It was a $2,500 lesson that if I can just pass on to you, do not let your emotions get the best of you. Uh, there's no reason to give a deposit. You can always sleep on it. You can always use the wife card. You can say, I gotta go talk to my wife about it. And that is what I should have done. And I will never forget that lesson. I can promise you that. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, since the tint's so dark, I'll go ahead and open all these windows up. This has an extra auxiliary fuel pump. It needs a little bit of warm up. So you turn the key on. Let that sit for a little bit. I usually open up the windows. Go ahead and crank it over. Let's go ahead and dump out that water. And this took a little bit of getting used to because I'm used to working with excavators. I was pretty clumsy with this for a couple of days. This over here controls the bucket go up and down tilt like that and then this controls the four-way so if you push it forward it opens up push it down so in this position it's kind of like a bulldozer uh, and then if you tilt it bring it all the way up tilt it down like this kind of use I'll bring it exaggerated a little bit so you can see but you can kind of drag that front blade around and then kind of levels the land Let's go ahead and pop it in gear. Drive around like this. They're not the most land capable land clearing pieces of equipment. They're just, there's no replacement for an excavator if you have a ton of land to clear because they're so exposed underneath. Let me try and show you. skid steer there's absolutely no hoses or anything it's one solid plate of solid metal so proper equipment like this can just go anywhere and do anything if I were to do it all over again I would get one bigger skid steer and one excavator with a thumb on the back
there you have it. That is the uh, dream team to get it all done out here. Got the 95 580K backhoe, the 2016 or 2014, I can't remember, Terex R070T. I would not recommend getting a Terex because I have found out that they're out of business and you can't get parts very easily for them. Got this trailer off of Craigslist for 50 bucks. That's just my trash and scrap trailer. And then I got this box truck for a thousand bucks. Trailer came with the, it didn't come with it, it was an extra $750, uh, but the skid steer, which I love. It's a 7,000 pound little trailer. And then all this fencing I actually got from my friend that has that site work company. This was all pulled off a job. And so I went up and collected it so that I can use the fence to fence in the whole perimeter of the property. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Hope you're staying safe. Have a good one.